Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my tours. My name is Ilona, so welcome to a virtual tour of Prague. And in this time, uh, in this case, I would like to invite you to a place called Podskali. Skala means a rock, and Podskali means the place under the rock. And the, the, the location where I'm standing right now, it's along the river. So have a look around. This is Vltava River. In the distance you can see Prague uh, Castle, that's a traditional residence of uh, rulers of this country, Prague Castle. It will be a subject of one of my next tours, but I would like to return back uh, and uh, let you have a look at that Vyshehrad. Once it used to be a kind of competition to Prague Castle, or not necessarily a competition, but alternative residence to rulers of this country, the first Czech king. And the place where we are right now, it's what we call Naplavka. Naplavka, like a lower embankment. This is a popular place at the moment. It's um, well, it's almost empty, but by weekends uh, it fills up with people and especially when the weather is nice, people like to come here. All this uh, uh, reinforced uh, uh, bank uh, of the river, actually not only one bank, it's on both sides. Uh, that's the architecture from the end of the 19th century and the first years of the 20th century. It started to look the way how we can see it till these uh, days. And uh, it was the uh, result of the Industrial Revolution and various uh, significant changes. People had money and wanted to live more comfortably uh, when uh, they came with uh, plans to redevelop uh, that uh, old Prague with small uh, houses where the living was not very comfortable to uh, city of uh, new apartment houses, new school buildings and so on. And one of those places that were completely redeveloped uh, on the turn of centuries more during the first uh, years of the 20th century, it's this area um, called Podskali. Uh, and uh, it's below the rock, as I said, Podskalo, Podskali means below the rock, meaning over there the Vyshehrad uh, castle upon the rock, where actually if to go along the river uh, by until 1904, one would get into a dead end with no way to continue. Uh, so here there were people who, were, uh, uh, who used to make their living as those uh, owners of boats and uh, the ferry men who used to take people uh, below that rock uh, to the continuation of uh, the bank on this right bank of Vltava River or another opportunity how to continue was to walk all around that big uh, fortress. Today it looks like a fortress. Uh, what we are looking at uh, in the distance is the Church of St. Peter and Paul. And we can also see the train bridge from 1901, so more than a century old. Well, we are also standing below some very unusual structure. Have a look at it and you may guess what it is. It has a name such as Limnigraf and if it doesn't say anything to you, so it's a water meter. It is from 1907, we can read the date here, from 1907. And uh, this was a special device for uh, measuring the uh, depths of the water, quantity of the water, the flow of the water using various uh, floating uh, devices. It also serves as a clock over there, and it's an interesting Art Nouveau construction here on the embankment and we have two of them. Uh, the second one is nearby St. Agnes Convent. So we have two of them and they look almost uh, alike. So train bridge. The train is there. On the bridge it's a little bit noisy. And before we speak about that uh, Podskali. I would like to switch to myself. So, hello. Now, Prague Castle is somewhere there behind me. And uh, I wish you to have good quality of the transmitted uh, picture and sound. And uh, let's start our walk through this so called Podskali. 
so I'm switching back. So this area completely changed its appearance at the beginning of the 20th century. As a matter of fact, it was in two waves. The first one was to redevelop the whole area, like demolition of small houses and small streets disappeared and many of the functional buildings uh, got uh, uh, dismantled and they are not anymore in existence. For instance, right here, where there is this building with flags on the corner and famous uh, sweet shop, uh, there used to be royal deposits of salt. Solnice, not anymore. Well, in three huge blocks, new buildings were constructed along the embankment, and then it's very geometrical because then there is a street called Podskalska, so that means the street of under the rock. Then Navitoni, I will just in a moment explain what does it mean, and then Naslovanech, Slovane, that was uh, the name of uh, the monastery of Slavonic Benedictines. Uh, the monastery is still in existence and uh, we are going to see it at the end uh, of our tour. In my previous tour, uh, I presented cubist architecture. We are not far from those buildings. They are below that Vyšehrad, uh, former castle, Vyšehrad fortress. So behind the tram, we can see some roofs, so there is um, uh, there are some of those uh, cubist buildings right there, but that's a subject of another tour, what you can find on uh, my uh, page on Facebook. And um, now let's have a look uh, why this particular place and even uh, the stop of the tram is called Vitoň. Uh, it's derived of the verb Vitinat, what means to cut off. And in the past times, this place that lived of professions such as, cra well, there were crafts, uh, raftsmen, not just craftsmen, but raftsmen, because uh, the people who lived here, they made their living of transportation of wood and timber. Uh, there were also uh, tradesmen who used to trade uh, this wood. Then there were sand miners, there were gravel producers, there were ferrymen, as I have also mentioned. And uh, when the river used to freeze over the winter time, so icemen used to work here. So they cut, they used to cut blocks of ice and transport them to various cellars where the ice slowly melting used to cool places, for instance. Uh, beer cellars and so on uh, through the rest of the year. And also boatmen. So those were many people who uh, made their living of uh, coexistence uh, with the river by the name Vltava River. So once more we are looking at this river that comes from the south, continues to the north and some 30 kilometers to the north of Prague it flows to Labe or in German language Elbe River. Elbe then continues to the North Sea. So sooner or later the water that we can see here on uh, in this river right here uh, reaches the North Sea. Now I'm going to wait for the green light in order to cross safely. You see the traffic on the train bridge is quite busy. It's about the third train that I see. I see during these few minutes that we started the tour and look at the building over there with the red roof in front of us. It's located a bit lower. It's on the original level of the open bank of the embankment that was here until uh, the turn of centuries when the walls along the river were constructed and the embankment got these two levels. The embankment was apartment houses and uh, the lower bank that uh, what I've mentioned it's called Naplavka. So I'm going to show you this building with a red roof. Uh, we call it Celnice. In translation it means customs house. So tolls, customs used to be collected. Let me go around because uh, there is an easy way of how to access this lower level. 
so this way if you can recognize we are going lower and lower later I will walk up uh, using steps and this building is from the 16th century nowadays it serves as a museum where you can learn about life of this disappeared part of Prague because as I said it was completely redeveloped there's a memorial plaque and uh, we can read that in the 16th century the building was constructed with the wooden ceiling and uh, there's a lot uh, preserved of those pastimes and there's also the symbol coat of arms of historic new town this coat of arms is from 1671 we are going to have a look at it in a moment however new town was founded by king charles the fourth in 1348 and as a matter of fact uh, it was uh, uh, father of Charles the um, of Charles the Fourth, yes, who gave the locals the privilege to collect uh, the tolls, and it was it was actually as early as in 1316. Uh, the building, as such, from 1908, belongs to Prague as a city of Prague, and from 1939 it serves as a museum. But let me show you. There's a an advertising for this vanished Podskali and life on the Vltava River. So that's the building. The one on the left, it's not in existence anymore. You will see it just in a moment. I'm already showing you that beautiful, very decorative piece of art. It's, it, is, uh, it represents new town. So coat of arms symbol of historic new town founded by King Charles IV in 1348 1316 John of Nepomuk gave the locals the right to collect tolls for transport uh, of transportation wood so the wood was cut off, those locks were collected uh, people had uh, very little change to pay in in cash I would say but uh, the toll was collected in form of uh, the uh, wood and those locks uh, there was a restaurant before the pandemic of coronavirus started there was a lovely pub you see there are still tables and chairs and even though now uh, the restrictions are uh, gradually removed and uh, the restaurants are open uh, in um, uh, at, at least in the um, external parts I mean those those uh, the possibility to sit outside of the buildings uh, those parts of restaurants are open you cannot sit indoor but only outdoor but it looks like uh, nobody is here to reopen this lovely restaurant but let's have a look at this building and let me show you these steps now i have to climb up these steps in order to reach the level of the street there's another train you see a very busy a busy train connection and let's now walk through these streets there I want to show you some interesting architecture and also tell you some stories related to this place. For instance, the name of the street here, Nahrobci. Well, it's in some old Czech language, but Hrob means a grave. So one would say, oh my God, uh, well, on the grave, where are those graves? So uh, they were, by archaeologists, they were discovered some locations of uh, graves from the pagans times legend however has it that there was also a grave discovered of some Przemyslid rulers of this country so no wonder that at the end of this street called Nahrobci there is a house called at three kings this is a popular place look at the playground so kids are enjoying uh, lovely weather, it's not cold, it's not warm, 
and if you have a look through this street so our tour will finish over there where you can see trees uh, there is a park called Zitkove Sade but before we reach that place I want to tell you more about this particular place so Celnice or the Toll House is one of those very few places preserved from the older times and another place there you will find out that the level is lower it's right here there are two buildings that and the street is called Navitoni so again that Vitoni cutting off the toll paid by wood or by means of wood and locks so this street goes down not very comfortable for walking the houses belong they are not in private ownership they belong to city of Prague and that very last one that has the window to the other side and it looks like there are no windows from this side there used to be a mill as early as in the 14th century and we are we are on the um, uh, in the past times the whole this settlement was started along the banks of Botic river that flows into Vltava river and there was a ditch that conducted the water from that Botic river into the neighborhood of this mill and it uh, worked as a drive for a mill so like a flour mill but also a sawmill and there used to be also a bakery well not much left but just to let you know and now we are going to return return back these old stones that are not comfortable for walking they are very uneven you can see that each one is of a different size but they are kind of rounded you find no sharp edges for some reason Czechs call them kočičí hlavy. In translation it means hats of cats. So somebody probably hated cats. <laughs> Poor cats. I don't know why it is so, but uh, it's an idiomatic expression. Hats of cats, kočičí hlavy. But in meanwhile, let's have a look at this beautiful Art Nouveau building in front of us. It's full of lovely details and we can find even this lovely relief man on the horseback it's patron saint of this country saint Wenceslas on that little plaque below you can find the inscription that this building was built in 1908 and restored in 2010 but earlier I spoke about the house at Five Kings and we are going to have a look at it in a moment. Beer is very popular, but besides the local beer, you can find even guineas in this place. There is a nice uh, connection, Vitoň, like here, Cafe Louis. Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton. <laughs> well, somebody had a good sense of humor picking up the name. Before I show you that house, we just passed it, but in order to see it, I have to cross to the opposite side of the road. I have to be careful. Yes. And look over there, the, the building in front of us was that Madonna and Child is uh, richly decorated by motifs of uh, Czech legends but related to legends there's also this building at Five Kings and I will try to bring the view closer so here you can read the name Vratislav, Vojen, Mnata, Nezamysl and Przemysl so these five kings and up there the inscription is in Czech language U pěti králu by five kings let's continue this area was completely redeveloped uh, there was a printing house constructed several school buildings there was a poor house constructed but what we are looking at uh, on the horizon you can see spires of the church of saints peter and paul but closer to us that orange yellow 
that's uh, at the former town hall of uh, Vishehrad town below Vishehrad fortress. It's from the first half of the 19th century. Uh, train connection. And here I want to show you, there's some even totally new architecture right here, about 10, maybe 15 years old. But I want to show you this, maybe not not uh, pretty, but you can find the date up there, 1938. It was an extension uh, built to the printing house, which is otherwise from 1907, and we'll have a look at it as soon as I manage to cross the road. Yes, now there's a green light. And we'll have a look at this building. Then I want to tell you more because that printing house was uh, quite important. Uh, it was called originally. It was called Unia. We are going to see that name in a moment. If you have a look at decoration, that that right part is more decorative. And this one is left, so this is the additional part built in 1938 when it came out that the printing house needs to become larger. They became so popular, but let me get back to the history. On the very same place, the first uh, zincographic plant used to be here, so some special, um, special printing house for reproductions. And it was built in 1890 eight by the owner the owner was some mr Willy, entrepreneur by the name Willy, and then he made a joint venture with very popular very successful publishers of the name ota and Willy mac and in 1900 exactly they created a very successful joint venture for instance ota's encyclopedia was very famous Willy mac uh, his uh, uh, books about Prague and so on that was very well known so uh, the money from this like union of three uh, three entrepreneurs they're available for a complete redevelopment of the previous building and architect Karel Hirman uh, created this Art Nouveau in geometrical style printing house that was so successful that, for instance, in 1918, when Czechoslovakia was declared, they were entrusted to print the first Czechoslovak stamps. However, when the World War II finished, and in 1948, uh, the communists won um, in this country, and they started to nationalize everything, the, the, uh, the printing house was nationalized. Uh, it got under contra company Nasze Wojsko, what means our army, later on. However, it was renamed to Polygraphia in 1960. And as a matter of fact, uh, they were really well equipped, uh, very successful, high quality printing. And many of the publishers from abroad got printed their books um, and reproductions and magazines in this printing house under that name Polygraphia. So you may have a look into your books and maybe you find that name. This Polygraphia then uh, worked under this, this name from 1960 until 2000. Then new developers purchased this large complex and converted it into a hotel. It lasted several years until 2007, so when it was 100 years from when uh, the printing house was open. Over there you can see Unie and double-headed eagle to reflect the um, Austro-Hungarian Empire. So it was, uh, it is a Habsburg symbol, double-headed eagle, but it's nicely symmetrical on this building. So when 100 years after the printing house was open, it was converted into a hotel. It was called Park Inn. However, now there are new owners and the name was changed and it's called Hermitage. So, now I quickly walked across the road 
and we continue, so the hotel is open, and on the opposite side, that yellow red building, it's from 1885, it's, a, it's an elementary school, it's quite a large complex of an elementary school with a very good reputation. Now, for almost half a year, the children could not go to, could not attend school. Now, the uh, children of elementary schools are back, and from 24th of May, from the upcoming Monday, uh, the students of uh, secondary schools uh, will return back to school benches again. Well, there used to be even a theater, there used to be a movie cinema. Uh, this Potskari was like a, like a special unit uh, within, within Prague. But uh, the population changed quite dramatically. Well, I have to say that now I'm going to show you the place where I used to go to school, not to elementary, but the secondary or high school, gymnasium, we say in Czech language, but it's not gymnasium for physical exercises. This is uh, the kind of like academic school and no wonder that, uh, well, our specialization was uh, phys uh, it was chemistry and uh, chemistry and biology and no wonder the school is under patronage of school uh, or actually faculty of natural science of Charles University so you can see you can see the symbol you can see the sign in in uh, English uh, in uh, not in English in Eng I want to show you how it looks like behind the gate it has some uh, sport equipment in the in the uh, in the yard. So what I want to say, I have very nice memories of this place and I still have good friends from those times when I was a student uh, of this particular street. This huge complex of buildings was constructed from 1882 up to 1885 approximately and it consists of three parts consists of three parts. I will cross to the other side so we'll have a better view. So you see it's symmetrical. It has the statues here on the roof and on the facade. Well, now there are grills in the windows, but as a matter of fact, I do remember we, we used to have our classroom on the ground level. And so it was a couple of times that somebody who was uh, late to lessons, we used to lift him up and put him into the classroom through the, helped him to get inside through the windows. Uh, but the times are over now for security reasons. Uh, you cannot uh, insure the building unless you have uh, this protection on the ground level. So the street here, now it's called Vyšehradská, so derived of Vyšehrad. Uh, there used to be a very important historic route from Vyšehrad uh, to Charles Bridge, to Old Town Square, Charles Bridge and Park Castle. Uh, but uh, this lower part was called Botičská, which now is only the name of that street where there's the elementary school and the secondary school or that gymnasium. And uh, today that Vyšehradská uh, ulice, it goes from the tr uh, train connection where we saw the uh, printing house up to Charles Square. Now this huge complex and you see that there are flags, it serves as a ministry of justice. But it has an interesting history. Originally, right here, there used to be a monastery of Saint Bartholomew. It was even founded by Mother of Charles IV. Uh, but uh, then there was a hospital constructed here in, in early 16th century. However, this monastery was abolished by Emperor Joseph II in late 1700s. And uh, it was redeveloped into a 
poor house and uh, elderly people house. What was here before was later demolished at the end of the 19th century and redeveloped into what you see right now, the block of three buildings of the same appearance. And uh, there was uh, the new poor house established here. The architect, this architecture, Josef Srdinek. During the time of World War I, there was established an army hospital and I found out that they were specialized, their special focus was on leg amputation. Oh my goodness. After the war, this complex started to serve as a retirement home. In 1930, uh, however, the Ministry of Health Care moved in because by that uh, time the Ministry of Justice was uh, in the building where now is the Ministry of Defense nearby Prague Castle. And the Ministry of Justice was moved to this uh, building uh, in the time of the occupation of this country by Nazi Germany, so that means in 1939. And only in uh, 60 or in 1958 that last part now in the dif distance was converted into a school and it started to serve as that gymnasium there I was a student in those those many years ago but well, it's nice to see that people can enjoy themselves here sitting outside, having fun. They still cannot go inside, but they can sit outside the restaurant. So the only problem is that the weather is not very friendly and it may rain any minute. I hope not, at least not during our uh, tour. Well, that's the advantage for you, that you can enjoy the walk with me and you can sit down comfortably and you don't need to walk kilometers and you don't uh, get wet when the rain starts. Well, never mind. What you're looking at, it's a botanical garden that belongs to the university. Um, it's, uh, it's of that uh, school faculty of uh, natural science. Uh, rhododendrons are blooming and also look at these interesting trees. I forgot the name of them, but uh, never mind. Let's turn back and we are going to enter the street that's called Trojitska. That means the street of the Holy Trinity. And I'm going to show you one more of those old places uh, preserved from the past times when this used to be the area with narrow streets, small houses below that rock of Vyšehrad, but also below the rock was the monastery of Slavonic Benedictines known as Emauzy or Naslovanech. Uh, can you see behind the wall the buildings and you can see also these spires. Uh, that's a new architecture. These spires, I mean, after the air raid on the 14th of February 1945 when Prague was bombed by mistake or on purpose, hard to say, Americans bombed Prague. About 150 tons of bombs were dropped on Prague. But this is what I want to show you. Look at this lovely small church. The only one that survived all that clearance reconstruction of this Potskali and it's a church of the holiest trinity. It's very much believed that the first uh, church on the same site was uh, uh, completed when uh, the monastery of Slavonic Benedictines was under construction. It lasted 25 years to construct that monastery. And the builders and all those people who were employed on the construction, they used this small church of the holiest uh, uh, trinity. Uh, what I want to say is that at the beginning of 1700s, however, the church got into a very bad uh, stage of disrepair. And uh, there was a question about what to do with it. Even like there was an idea, let's go and demolish it. But eventually it was preserved and uh, uh, it was even modernized. Uh, this uh, church was modernized and redeveloped in Baroque style in 1720, 
1728. There used to be even a, a cemetery in this neighborhood, but uh, when the nearby monastery was abolished by Emperor Joseph II, also the cemetery in this area was uh, abolished and it's not here any longer. This church belongs to Roman Catholics and uh, it's in function till these uh, days. In a moment I will cross and in meanwhile you can have a look at the building with that kind of a tower on the corner. It has a strange uh, name, Uprasatku. It is uh, from 1897 and it was decorated by famous Czech painter, the one who for instance was uh, entrusted to be an artist of uh, National Theatre group, uh, those who decorated the National Theatre, the real pride of uh, Czech art. The National Theatre was built on the money of all those who wanted to support an idea to have theatre in Czech language, so obviously it was a matter of prestige to uh, become an artist. Uh, so this uh, Adolf Liebscher created these beautiful paintings. Unfortunately, they are not very contrast and the light is not that good, so maybe you cannot really recognize it that well. But another thing what I want to draw your attention to, there's a lovely statue of Saint Ludmilla. Uh, it's also one of patron saints of this country. In the ground level of this building, there's now a preschool, Materska Škola. If you have a look in the back, there are functionalist garages. It's from 1930, so functionalism. That's something else that I want to mention, and in a moment we are going to have a look at uh, the school. So we have seen already uh, the uh, elementary school, we have seen that gymnasium, and now we are going to see a special school on um, uh, food technology built in 30s uh, in a uh, functionalist style. But in meanwhile you may have a look at this architecture. Behind the wall, behind the wall uh, there is a large space where I used to go when I was, uh, when I attended the first and the second grade of the elementary school. There were uh, two small pavilions and I looked there through the gap in between the gate and the wall and I discovered that the pavilions are gone but uh, this place behind the wall is undergoing the redevelopment and it looks like there will be a new uh, park. Uh, so let's, let's have a look, uh, let, let's see, let's wait for a surprise. There's another interesting building here, Upotskaláka, that means uh, by the man of uh, Podskali of this district and uh, some historic names are quite funny such as at three warriors or at ten virgins and so on. Well, there's nice like a house sign Madonna and child but some others are more influenced by that uh, straight-lined functionalism uh, with the wave of uh, the cubism architecture and we can already see the school that I have mentioned the special school originally there used to be a, a school on beer production technology in the 19th century and then it was redeveloped so you can see it has unusual shape of that kind of waving wall So the architecture of, I said, functionalism uh, built in between 1912 up to 1930, gradually part by part, it was uh, it has been extended. But what I want to show you is there are two statues plus two memorial plaques. So one brings the name of. Professor Yaroslav Heyrovsky, who was an outstanding inventor and uh, father of electroanalytic method called polarography. He was even rewarded 
was recognized and rewarded by the Nobel Prize. He lived here in between 1926 to 51. And the street where we are right now is called Ladova. It's named after famous Czech painter Josef Lada. But before I show you his, uh, his memorial, I want to let you see also the statue of one of the raftsmen. This one with the cable. I hope you can recognize you can recognize uh, the view of the statue. It was made by sculptor Jaroslav Bruha. And uh, there are some interesting decorations as well. And I will show you also the second statue on the corner of that pink building. There is another of this raftsman with a long stick. There are also some decorations on these, on this yellow house and somewhere here, now I'm trying to recognize, uh, there used to be a very popular wine bar, Fregata, where we used to go as students when we got bigger or older to have a permission to drink but uh, it looks like it's gone. I think it's somewhere here where you can see those lovely lamps. And the memorial plaque to Josef Lada. Czechs know him very well because he made very um, lovely looking uh, appearances, uh, pictures that show different periods of the year and winter and uh, mostly it represents Czech countryside around the place where he was born at Hrusice. Here in Prague he lived uh, in between 1925 to 1957 when he died. He's also known for the story about a uh, cat, a black cat by the name Mikesh, the cat that was able to walk and that was able to speak. So the second statue of the raftsman. Have a look at him. So it used to be a very hard work. Now I'm going to show you, let's return back to embankment. There's a, one of the government buildings. Uh, yep. So we used to call this school of, school of uh, common catering or yeah, common catering, that's how I would call it. We used to call it in the past times the dumpling school. But now it's a food technology school and uh, the uh, high school of economical studies. Once more, functionalism, 1930. Well, functionalism is also the style that influenced the architects who built uh, the corner house in front of us and also the neighboring houses to the, to the left. You can see, not yet, but you will see the following ones. They are even covered by tiles on the facade. We were over there where you can see the green area, so that's near the place where we started our tour. It's that green area around that customs house. And now we are on Plavetska Street, so Plavets like a swimmer, but uh, those were the raftsmen, those who used to transport timber on and those locks, I mean wood on the Vltava River. The buildings here are beautifully decorated. Well, in the past times, when I used to live in the neighborhood and I used to go to school in this neighborhood, frankly, we never really paid much attention to these buildings and their decorations. 
but uh, these things changed because uh, now the buildings are back in private hands, they are nicely restored, repaired, and uh, suddenly you can recognize the details that make them special. So I'm crossing to the other side, back to the river and all that, because I want to show you these buildings from the side. So this particular building in front of us, maybe the details are not so well visible, but this is another example of combination of functionalism and uh, perhaps cubism. Look at the metal work on balcony on the upper level and lower level. This building was constructed by two architects, Josef Zasche and Jan Kotiera, very famous ones, in between 1912 to 14, and it served as a general pension institute. Nowadays, it houses office for representation of the state in property matters. Once more, look at the details on the door, on one balcony, on the upper balcony, shape of those wooden parts dividing the glass pieces in the windows. But let's continue along the, it's a pleasant place so people can walk here below the trees but you can also walk through this Naplavka, it's a very popular place over there you can see Prague Castle. So it's very pleasant area and if not for traffic, <laughs> even with the traffic, it's, it's an interesting place. Look at this combination of cubism with Art Nouveau of the, or Art Deco in this case. Look at the decorations, details on the facade. Uh, metal work on balconies. I was hoping for a little bit more of the sunshine, but uh, this is not the most typical weather for May months. In May we usually have much warmer weather and more sunny. And this year is different because the snow snow actually it was snowing even in in April in some days and May is still it's almost like several weeks delayed I would say in nature uh, on the other hand the specialists who deal with the water supplies in the ground they are happy because the previous years were very dry and supplies of the water got very thin so now they are restarted, reestablished. So I will try once more to cross back because I want to show you two memorial plaques. One you can see on the corner. It's a face of a very successful Czech sculptor Jaroslav Horejc. In a short while I will show you his, uh, uh, his statues. But you can find here, so once more, the face of the sculptor who lived here. And on the opposite side you can find memorial plaque to Josef Suk, famous Czech composer. And we are back on the street that's called Trojitska Street, where in its continuation there is a church of the holiest uh, trinity. Buildings have interesting decorations above the doors or along the doors. On the facade, look at those columns or column looking decorations in between windows. Interesting triangle balconies or metal balconies over there. And we have the last part of our tour ahead. So from this 
Trojicka, we are now on Podskalska street and we'll reach the street that's called Napořičním právu. Obviously it sounds like a tongue twister, but in translation it means on the river law. There used to be, look at this building with those like Egyptian statues holding the upper part of the door. So this is a location of once some kind of a town hall for this uh, Potskali. There was the center of, for instance, the guild of uh, guild of uh, raftsmen. That guild was active from the 16th century until the 18th, until the 19th century. Then the building was demolished and replaced. But maybe as a uh, maybe as a commemoration of what was here before, there serves this appearance, this relief that shows a man cutting stone. So it's a, we may call him gravel producer. And if you go over there a little further on, can you see the green area? There's a tiny park tiny park called Na Slovanech and in the past times right there by that wall there used to be a house that served as a prison. The prison had strange name Fishpanka. There was some manufacture earlier but uh, the manufacture was converted into a prison and uh, provisioning institute. Uh, and it was here until 1933. Then it was demolished and uh, completely dismantled and it was converted into that little park or just like a piece of green area. Grass, trees, some bushes, but no walkways through. It's tiny. Uh, if you have a look uh, on this building in front of us, so that's a part of the ministry complex built by uh, Bohumil Hipschman and it was all constructed in between years 1923 to 31. And uh, this architect, Hipschmann, was given a task. He actually won the contest or competition of the architects since he made a project that divided the buildings here below uh, Emause Monastery. We'll see it just in a moment because uh, the condition was to let that monastery be still visible. But before I show you, you will understand in a moment, I want to draw your attention to this building. It's one of those that uh, I really like to look at. Well, this Art Deco decoration, those gilded details, it made it, um, in my opinion, it's very, very elegant. Actually, all these three buildings, uh, they match together. It's a lovely architecture and also the inner parts, staircases and so on are very nice. Unfortunately, it's not really possible to enter them because they are locked but never mind I want to say that even though it looks like it's a part of the square in a moment we finish our tour but the street has the name it's called Drzevna it means uh, street of woods so or wood wood not woods it would be not not growing trees but but uh, there used to be a storage place for locks uh, and uh, for uh, wood and also that street uh, named after Czech painter Josef Lada Ladova that was called uh, for Ohradach so there used to be fences also storage places for the wood so as we said the Spotskali they made uh, people who lived here in the past times used to make their living out of the trade and professions related to water but let's now have a look into this green area Zitkovy Sady, so it's named after Czech architect Josef Zitek and you might be surprised it serves occasionally as a heliport so even though I don't recall seeing any helicopter landing here but I saw some videos and I found an interesting uh, identification 
So in four corners of this green space you find uh, Bivir, helicopter can land here, obviously then police assists here around. Uh, there is a plan for the future to uh, create some floating heliport floating on the river because this place is uh, technically not very suitable so when that helicopter lands the, to move um, let's say if they bring the hospitals are nearby and uh, if the helicopter brings somebody injured or in, pr in trouble in problem it's very difficult to get over these grass parts and it's uh, as you may see steps are here so it's uh, hardly accessible uh, definitely you see uh, on a wheelchair you don't get down to the lower level but let's switch to something else a different subject Yaroslav Horates was a sculptor who created this statue and one more is over there and all this complex is decorated by his uh, statue so we saw he lived nearby and from the material called travertine this special stone he created uh, statues another one is over there you can see another of those statues so now the last what i want to show you It's a memorial and also, well, let me tell you, describe the view, but I will find some suitable place. So now, if you have a look on the horizon, you can see the church, uh, which is a part of uh, a large complex of a very old monastery of Slavonic Benedictines, founded by Charles IV. Uh, here on the grounds of the historic new town, even one year prior foundation of the historic new town. So I'm speaking about the year 1347 is when this monastery was founded. Its history is very complicated, but I can conclude it to um, uh, the fact that it's still functioning. It survived even the air raid on the 14th of February 1945. The uh, towers uh, that were facing the embankment uh, were destroyed and uh, they were hit by that air raid 14th of February 45 and only in about 1960 the uh, traditional towers were replaced by these two I would call it like uh, intersecting wings concrete uh, construction but uh, I'm finding this architecture to be uh, very inventive. Uh, I think it matches well to, to the place. Now, switching to another subject, that little church in front of it, Church of Cosmas and Damian, uh, it's believed that it has been there or some kind of place of prayer had been there uh, from the 9th to 10th century that uh, patron saints of this country such as Saint Procopius, Saint uh, Adalbert and Saint Wenceslas used to come to this church but uh, today's appearance is from the 12th century with some redevelopments of the later times. But now have a look at the statue. It's a memorial to Czechoslovak legions, soldiers of World War One and it's called Prague to its victorious sons Praha svým vítězným synům the first version of this statue was created in 1933 however during the time of World War II uh, this memorial was destroyed by Nazis so then only years later when it was uh, the anniversary of 80 years from when Czechoslovakia was declared 1998 uh, the statue was re-established. Sculpture decoration was created by Joseph uh, Majatka, actually very successful Czech uh, artist who even <coughs> excuse me, lived uh, in Paris and was a student of uh, famous August Rodin. And ladies and gentlemen, now let's uh, have a look around. We walked through these streets once more what we are looking at it's a ministry of uh, uh, social welfare uh, ministry of labor and social welfare the other part of this huge complex uh, that's the ministry of health care and i think i told you everything what i wanted to tell you today